and showing it to people. And he feels that the, the skull should be uh, handled, should be uh, uh, felt and experienced by people. And that's why she's so open to uh, the taking it around and showing it. And she's the cutest little old lady. I just adore oh, yeah. her. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked her, here you have a priceless artifact. It's really one of the most incredible artifacts on this planet. And I said, what do you do to protect it? She looked at me like I was an idiot. She took me to the door, and there she had a London Bobby Club. And she said, if anybody tries to get in here, I'll hit him on the head. <laughs> and it's just an absolute scream, you know, the way this, this priceless... Uh, well, you've experienced the, the visual images that come yes, up from the uh, skull. I, I'm a little bit like Alan Vaughn. Every once in a while, I push my mind out into the ether and, and see what it picks up. And... Uh, one of the things that uh, I found, and some of my colleagues, some of them are psychic, some of them are not, have found is that the, com the, the skull is very much like a giant computer bank. In other words, it picks up information and stores it. And if you, if you, for example, most people aren't aware of this ability, and one of the greatest people on the planet with this ability is Peter Herkus, who lives in Studio City, California. Right here around the corner. Yes, and Peter can touch any object that some other human being has touched, and it's incredible to watch him get information from that one-touch contact. He can go on for hours doing a dossier on a person, starting with their birth and going on into the future. Well, did uh, Peter ever touch the crystal skull? No, it's one of the things uh. that he and I have got on our schedule. We've got about a hundred things like that we should do, but we got to do that because... If there's going to be a solution to the mystery of the skull, Peter will find it. So, Peter, I hope you're listening to me. We've got to take a trip up to Canada and do it. Well, see, but anyway, that's the nature of the skull. It has all this information on it, and it's not too difficult to access in terms of place, time, and so on, and so on. It'll even play back information that you have given it if you're watching Oh, absolutely, longer. yes. I mean, you can fold it for things that happened tens of thousands of years ago and so on. And it, it's a vast, complex subject, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, the skull is, is given a home uh, that is proper for its, its great value. Well, I don't know why it's not being subjected to the most strenuous kind of scientific examination. Well, unfortunately, you know, a parapsychology is not exactly high-level, high-energy science. I don't know, but if you've got an artifact that is playing back images, yes. and even the photographs of the images change, yes. Yes. as is the case with the photographs that were taken on Kodak film, the photographs change, you know you're dealing with something quite unusual. Yes, and I, I've tried uh, with my little influence to get major foundations to get behind this as a major study, we're not making a little progress, but we have not launched a major study yet. Well, we'll uh, get deeply into that with Nick Nessarino next week, and I oh, thank yeah. you very much for uh, sharing a little bit of the work that you have done with the yeah. Mitchell Hedges skull. And Leroy wants to talk to you in just a moment about uh, those low-frequency waves and how yeah. harmful they are around his house, and we'll get to that in just a second. I'm Bill Jalair Leroy. Hello. Yes. Nice to listen to your show. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? Good evening. Just calling from Chatsworth here. Um, the question I have is uh, something to do with high-tension wires and electrical pollution. Does it have an effect on, on people? Let's say, like where I live, I have some high-voltage wires right outside my apartment. And I wonder if that's, if that's a negative to, to my being. Electronic smog. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, study done on that, particularly by Dr. Robert Becker, formerly of Syracuse University, now retired. And uh, they have shown that people living near high tension lines, usually about 750,000 volt potential, uh, do have adverse effects, behavioral effects. And uh, cows, for example, produce less milk. And there are other signs of biological effects. Now, we believe that it's not so much the uh, high potential that does it, but the magnetic uh, vector or the magnetic part of the field that does the dirty work. And uh, there's some studies done, strange enough, by the U.S. Navy uh, and published in Science Magazine, February 23, 1984, in which uh, the Navy tried to find out what frequencies have the maximum effect on the DNA of cells. 
and they clearly showed that somewhere between 60 hertz and 76 hertz, uh, there was a maximum effect in what's called mutagenesis. That means pushing cells toward the direction of cancer. And uh, that was a shocker when it came out because the Navy has been trying, U.S. Navy has been trying to sell American public for some 25 years and the idea that ELF is good for your health and that nobody should obstruct the, uh, the uh, uh, transmission of ELF to submarines. Well, uh, that's a very interesting and uh, highly controversial area. Of course, the ELF communication with submarines is out of hand. The Russians now do it verbally yeah. with, uh, with Scalar. Thank you very much, Leroy, for that question. We're going to take a break for the news at 10. Be right back with Dr. Andrea Pahavich and Alan Barnes. Part two of Open Mind. My name is Bill Jenkins. My guest tonight is Dr. Andrea Pahavich. He is on our conference line. We're talking about, oh, you name it, and we'll talk about it. In studio with me is also Alan Barr. And while the news was going on, something rather delightful I want to share that with you, if I may. So come on in. Our good friends at the Alexandria 2 bookstore drop by. Ralph, say hello. Hello. And congratulations to the store and uh, all of the, the good work that you're doing down there. Let's see. Um, try it again. Say hello. Hello. There you go. I forgot to turn your mic on, Ralph. I was going to talk to you. Thanks, Bill. I appreciate it. And everybody was going to have to hear you by ESP. What is this that you dropped by here? This is a new creation that you've helped us create. It uh, looks like an Easter basket. Yeah, it does. It's but what got... kind of Easter eggs are in that basket? Uh, runes, uh, incense, candles, a couple books, some crystals, all kinds of neat things. And oh. some things you'll discover when you open it up. Ah, I'm looking forward to it. This is something we're going to put together for the holiday season to make some baskets for people to give as gifts. Well, it's a birthday present for Bill. I didn't even know that you knew I had a birthday coming down the line. ESP. Yeah, <laughs> ESP, yes. I'm going to be 25 <laughs> <laughs> on Tuesday, or 26, or somewhere again. I thank you very much. It is just gorgeous. What's in the mummy? Uh, we have all kinds of stones, amethyst, sodalite, carnelian, tourmaline, <laughs> and <clears throat> about a dozen others. <laughs> all kinds of things. Uh, Just little little goodies from the Alexandria II bookstore. Huh? Yeah. All wrapped up in them. That's a beautiful gift. Thank you. And I thank you very, very much. We'd like to thank you also, Bill. <clears throat> Your show has been a lot of support and the listeners and it's given us a lot of um, reason to keep going on and the feedback has been tremendous and phenomenal and we appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you and Victoria for the uh, the marvelous work you do at Alexandria, too, and uh, bringing the books, the information, uh, the, the ambiance and the atmosphere for those that are on the quest that want to find out that there is more to life than most of us know. And it's very, very exciting out there. I'm, I'm excited about the success of your show, of your, uh, of your store, and very delighted and honored to be a part of it. Thank so, you. Uh, my congratulations to you and Victoria, and thank you so very much for the for the basket. I can't wait. To get it. <laughs> but I'll have to wait till Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think it'll last. <laughs> I don't think so. Either. I think that the temptation will be too much to rip in to that beautiful thing. But let us go on. We have Andrea Paharic on the line. Andrea? Yes. Are you ready? Uh, you should see this basket. It's got everything in there but uh, but your little clock. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, I'm going to bring some clocks out there to sell, so uh, maybe you'll see some. All right. All right, Roger's been waiting. You're on the line, Roger. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. I'd first like to ask uh, the doctor uh, where in these watches or where these watches can be obtained with the 8 megahertz signal. Be bringing, uh, my staff will be bringing them out to the two seminars, and uh, the people who are arranging these... Can you speak up a little bit more, Andrea? That line is terrible. People who are arranging the seminar will also have some for sale, so they'll be out there uh, when we get out there October 18th and 19th. Will you be happy to be giving any uh, conferences in Honolulu? Uh, no, but... Uh,